The idea behind string theory was to tie up the loose ends in physics, so to speak, connecting the forces, the four known forces, into being one unified force. The problem with unifying the forces, some of which has to do with the idea of symmetry breaking or the conservation of parity violations. And what that has to do with is particle decay modes and various other features of subatomic particles not being symmetrical as we would like them to mathematically be, as is with most of the rest of physics. So supersymmetry was a way of trying to find extra symmetries. There exists an idea that theoretically there's another particle, namely the Higgs particle, that if were able to be measured or discovered in the lab would satisfy a lot of these issues that we've mentioned relating to the idea of mass, where does mass come from. So the Higgs particle is sort of a fix-all, if you will, that if they can discover this thing in the lab, they can tie a lot of loose ends in physics. However, with the big announcement that's going to be made on July 4th, I really don't see them announcing that they've discovered the Higgs. I really doubt that they're going to come out with the big grand announcement of finding a Higgs particle and finding it in such a way that it satisfies all of the expectations. They're going to realize that a more complex concept of the Higgs particle would be needed given that the issues that the Higgs model was created to deal with, given that those issues can be resolved with three dimensions of time, I really don't see a need for there being a Higgs particle. However, I'm not excluding its possibility of existing. I just don't think it's necessary to have the Higgs particle in order to deal with all these same issues. I think they can be resolved in a more refined form of modern physics, specifically revisiting the calculus and, and the ideas behind what a reference frame is. Issues that the Higgs particle was conceived in order to deal with can be readily resolved using three dimensions of time and applying temporal dynamics or three dimensions of time to the Fourier transformation. What's interesting is that if you apply the concept of extra dimensions of time, specifically three dimensions of time, and use a four vector metric similar to the one that's already used in relativity, but rather than having three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. In this temporal metric, there's three dimensions of time, one dimension of space. You take the traditional metric and this new metric, apply them together, and with the Fourier transformation, you're able to derive two delta functions that pinpoint a particle's charge density, or energy states, if you will, and its mass. The data that they're going to announce is going to be compatible with other ideas rather than just the Higgs particle. And the physics community is going to have to adjust itself to the concept of mass being a negative volume of three dimensions of time. The idea that mass is actually just components of time, specifically three dimensions of time, or a negative volume of time, that's a radical new idea. In fact, all mass probably is, is some form or complex nature of time. For instance, mass really is associated with acceleration, given that mass itself doesn't require to have spatial components, such as a, part, a point particle mass. It becomes pretty evident that mass only has time attributes, no spatial attributes. So if we're going to reduce all of physics to components of space and time, sort of a space-time mesh, if you will, then what becomes apparent is that we need extra dimensions of time to match all the dimensions of space, so that at least if we're dealing with three dimensions of space, we're dealing with three dimensions of time, if we're going to add extra dimensions of either, that we have an equal amount of both, and the two come together in sort of an orthogonal manner, and 
the manner by which they relate gives us our four forces. In traditional physics, the exclusion principle states that for any given region of space-time, no two identical fermions in any system can be in the same quantum state or have the same quantum numbers. Using the existing application to modern physics, the inclusion principle states that for a given region of space-time, two identical fermions and or bosons in any system can be in the same quantum state, having the same quantum numbers, if and only if they are the same particle in two distinct present moments. Identity Exchange The process through which distinct identities of particles or phenomena are sustained as standing waves of identity through the exchange of quantum properties. Cross symmetry. The trans-dimensional exchange of identity between particles and antiparticles through forward and reverse time loops in three dimensions of time. Identity crisis. If two distinct but similar enough particles are in a very close proximity with one another, a conundrum occurs. Given the uncertainty principle cannot be broken, knowing both the position and momentum of both particles within a specific accuracy limitation dictated by physical law, the two identities become indistinguishable. The inclusion principle and the exclusion principle become interlocked in a temporal oscillation of the one becoming the other. Distinguishing one particle from the other becomes a point of quantum behavior. Through the inclusion and exclusion principles, in a cross-symmetrical fashion, particle and antiparticle identities exchange oscillating in and out of identity crisis moments in three dimensions of time. Therefore, the exclusion principle and the inclusion principle are complementary in nature, and physics can be reduced to various interplays between these two principles.